In this particular video, we are going to be looking at the final part of the chapter, which is known as cancer. Now, when I ask questions about cancer to my students, or I will ask my students, oh, what is cancer? And I will get some of these answers. They will say, oh, it's a disease. It's a deadly thing. It's dangerous. Uh, it's related to smoking. Some of my students will say that. Uh, some of my students will say there are many different types. There are many types of cancer, like, for example, lung cancer, liver cancer, colon cancer. Um, some students will also suddenly say, hmm, there's also something called a tumor. So, of course, then they will then ask me, oh, what's the difference between a cancer and a tumor, right? Now, what exactly is cancer then? Cancer is actually just a type of cell in our body that undergoes uncontrolled mitosis. And when it undergoes uncontrolled mitosis, it forms a ball of cancer cells. And that ball of cancer cells or a group of cancer cells is referred to as a tumor. It's as simple as that. But before, so I've highlighted two parts. I've highlighted something called uncontrolled mitosis, and I've also highlighted a ball of cancer cells. Now let's look at uncontrolled mitosis. Now, before talking about uncontrolled mitosis, however, we have to talk about controlled mitosis, which is what happens in our body all the time. Controlled mitosis just basically means the mitotic cell division happens in a controlled, coordinated manner, which means to say it only happens when it is necessary. What do I mean by that? For example, imagine if we had a tissue which is just basically a group of cells in our body, and the tissue undergoes a damage. Okay, so you can see some of the cells have gone missing. Now, to repair the tissue, what needs to happen? Yep, you're correct. Some of the cells will have to undergo mitosis. As you can see, the cells are undergoing mitosis, and they're also undergoing cytokinesis. Okay, they've undergone all their phases, the G1, S, G2, and then prophase, metaphase, anaphase, telophase, and then now they are doing the final phase, which is cytokinesis, and they produce newly divided cells. And those newly divided cells, which I've highlighted in pink, will then grow to become the mature cells, which will fill up the space, and thus the tissue is repaired. Now, once the tissue is repaired, mitosis stops. Okay, This is called controlled mitosis. The reason why mitosis stops is, well, because the tissue is repaired, okay? There is no need for any of the cells to undergo mitosis anymore. And thus, mitos the mitotic cell division only happens when it is necessary. This is called controlled mitosis. On the opposite end of the spectrum, we have something called uncontrolled mitosis. I'm just basically drawing out an undamaged tissue here. And in this case, the tissue is fine. There is no need for it to undergo mitosis at all, or no cells have to undergo the mitotic cell division. But what happens is the cell that I've highlighted in red have just has just decided to undergo mitosis. Now, why? We will talk about that later. But it's not supposed to because the tissue was fine. But that cell has decided to undergo mitosis. Now, when that cell undergoes mitosis, it will then produce two newly divided cells. And guess what? Those two newly divided cells now have the same characteristic. And that same characteristic is to just keep on undergoing mitosis over and over and over again. And the problem with that is it forms, the cells will grow up and it will continue undergoing mitosis. And when it continues undergoing mitosis, what happens is you will now have a ball of cancer cells. And look at what has happened to the tissue. It, the cancer cells or the tumor, it has pushed the normal or viable body cells to the side and they have formed a mass. And that mass over there is called a ball of cancer cells. The question is, can this ball of cancer cells damage your tissues or can it damage your cells? It can. And how does it damage the cells then? Now, more cells in our body require blood supply. Not all, but more cells in your body will require blood supply to uh, receive substances such as oxygen, glucose, and to also excrete waste products such as urea, carbon dioxide, uh, even excess water. 
I'm drawing out some body cells, normal body cells, and the blood vessel. So the, as you can see, the blood vessel is going in between the cells, and the cells are able to receive the blood, okay, to receive the substances and also to excrete waste back into the blood supply. This is considered normal. Now imagine if one of the cells that I've just basically highlighted in uh, green, okay, that cell suddenly became a cancer cell. It starts dividing uncontrollably by mitosis. It forms a tumor. Now, in uh, most cases, most tumors will just basically press on the tissue and cause damage to the tissue. But some tumors are pretty interesting. What the tumor can actually do is, the tumor can now divert the blood supply to go within itself, to nourish the cancer cells, or to provide nutrients to the tumor. So the blood supply is now diverted. And when the blood supply is diverted, what happens to the normal body cells which are requiring the blood supply? Well, the normal body cells die off. And if these normal body cells die off, then the function of the tissue or the organ will also die off. For example, if there is a tumor in your liver, but the blood supply, and it will starve the other normal liver cells. And those liver cells die off and your liver function will reduce, okay? And it may cause damage to your body, right? So we don't have to go into the detail of that. This is just one way in which a tumor can damage your body. So now that we have been introduced to the fact that, oh, okay, there's something called cancer, uh, and these cancer cells are just cells that undergo uncontrolled cell division, okay, fine. And then they can form a tumor, and this tumor can damage our body. Fine, we've understood that part so far. Then comes the question, how do cancer cells form? The scary thing is the randomness in which cancer cells can happen. Even as I'm talking to you right now, there may be cancer cells, not there, there may be form new cancer cells forming in my body, okay? Because it is down to a random process known as mutation, all right? So let's start with a normal body cell. And this body cell, if you remember, a human body cell, it has 46 chromosomes. But I'm just highlighting one of the chromosomes. I'm just drawing out one. I can't draw out all 46. Now, in one of the chromosomes, it has a gene. Okay, A gene is just basically a part of the DNA that codes for a specific protein. But we will see that in Chapter 6. But to keep it very simple, let's just basically say that this gene is to help the cell regulate mitosis. Which means to say that... This is the gene responsible to ensure that the cell undergoes mitosis when it is necessary. For example, there are many different types of genes uh, of this type, but an aspect of this gene is this gene prevents the cell from overdoing the mitotic cell vision. Now, what do I mean by that? Again, I'm just drawing out the cells. They, the tissue has been damaged, and when the tissue undergoes damage, some of the cells will undergo mitotic cell division. Now, once the cells undergo mitotic cell division, the gene will get activated. And thus, the cell will just stop undergoing mitosis. Okay, that's fine. However, in one of the cell, if I'm just highlighting it, the cell in red, it has the gene that regulates mitosis, only that gene has become mutated, which means to say the gene is unable to function anymore. We will talk about mutation more in chapter 6, okay? Because that's when we delve into gene mutation in detail. But for now, all you just have to understand about mutation is this. When mutation happens to the gene, we can assume that the gene is no longer able to function. There are exceptions, okay? But for, this, for the purpose of this chapter, let's assume that once the gene is mutated, it is unable to function anymore, all right? So... Remember, this gene was supposed to regulate mitosis, but because this gene is unable to function anymore due to the mutation, it will cause the cell to just keep on dividing. And this gene is now referred to as something called as an oncogene. Now, what is the meaning of oncogene? Oncogene is basically a gene in your body that causes cancer cells. Once the oncogene is inside the cell, Okay, the cell will just keeps on dividing, it will form a tumor. And that tumor is now damaging the tissue. So, long story short, 
you had a cell that had a gene that regulates mitosis and the cell only divides when it's needed. But what happens is that gene undergoes mutation and because it undergoes mutation, it forms oncogene and now the cell behavior is changed and the cell does what it wants to do. And that means it just continues dividing uncontrollably. And this is called uncontrolled mitosis and it forms a ball of cancer cells. If you notice the tumor, you, you will notice that yes, it forms cells, okay, new cancer cells, but the cancer cells are all of different sizes. They all have irregular sizes, okay? Uh, and even the size of the nucleus is quite different. That is a defining feature of most cancer cells in your body. Because they are dividing so quickly, they don't have time to grow and mature. Right? So some of the cells will have a very small size, some have a very large size, and even the shape of the cells will also be quite irregular. So that's how you know that you're looking at cancer cells. There are many irregularities in the shape of the cells uh, in a tumor, okay? which is a defining characteristic in a lot of tumors. Right? Um, and what makes cancer dangerous is these cancer cells may then spread to other parts of the body through the circulatory system. And this is known as metastasis, okay? Um, metastasis is quite dangerous because, for example, you may have the cancer in the liver, okay? But some of the liver cells, some of the cancer cells in the liver may go into the blood vessel uh, and spread to another part of the body, for example, the lungs. And when it goes into the lungs, it may, the cancer will then continue dividing inside the lungs to form a lung cancer. So the person can have cancer happening in two parts of the body simultaneously, the liver and also the lung. Okay? Um, in a lot of cases, sadly, when metastasis happens, uh, the chances of recovery or the prognosis is greatly reduced. Okay? There are exceptions. Uh, where the person may be saved or the person, um, we, can, we can treat the person with certain types of medication. But when metastasis happens, it's usually a little bit too late. Okay? Um, we are not going to go into the detail of the treatment of cancer because that is going to take a longer time. Okay? Plus, treatment of cancer is various. There are, many, there are many different types of medications that we use for cancer. Uh, so we will not go into the detail. So for the purpose of Cambridge, these five points which I've written out for you would be sufficient to explain what cancer is all about.